There are one million men, women and children in the world today with FSHD. At the moment, those million people are spending each day dealing with a condition that has no treatments and no cure. The FSHD Global Research Foundation is fighting to change this. Slides aren't working. The oh, here we go. Yep. FSHD is considered the most common form of muscular dystrophy affecting both adults and children. The genetic fault sits at the end of chromosome 4, in a region that should be quiet. In people with FSHD, this region is active, producing a protein called DUX4. DUX4 is a toxic protein. It negatively affects hundreds of downstream processes that lead to muscle cell death and ultimately loss of muscle function. And that is just the explanation for FSHD1. We now have FSHD2, 3, and given the complexity of this condition, I wouldn't be surprised if we had 4, 5, and 6 before too long. I'm a technical person, okay, here we go. In a very short period of time, the foundation has made some remarkable achievements. From discovering a new genetic cause for FSHD, to investigating how the genomic changes in FSHD affect the expression of thousands of genes involved in protein synthesis, energy production, and muscle development. In brief, the basic research the foundation has funded led us directly to understand the genetic mechanism of FSHD. But FSHD Global is more than just a research foundation. We are accountable to our community, and part of that accountability means driving research dollars into, into research that is going to get us closer and closer to treatments. We don't want this to happen sometime in the future. We want this to happen now. The watershed moment for basic research came in 2014, when a consensus was reached about the most likely cause of FSHD. This precipitated a massive change from basic research to translation, from the micro world of chromosomes and gene expression to the macro world of treatments. So much science fails at these transition points when you move from genes to cellular function, cells to animals, animals to humans, and humans to market. One of the most important investments that can be made in medical research is the creation of quality cell and animal models that closely mimic what you see in people. The foundation has been doing just that, investing in models to improve the success rate of research transitions. In 2008, we built human muscle cells in the lab. These cells perfectly recapitulate FSHD in a culture dish. They were instrumental in understanding the genetic cause of FSHD and are now revolutionizing drug discovery worldwide. FSHD Global is developing animal models that better mimic if the human condition. Some of these look at mechanisms that can reverse the effects of FSHD by building muscles like in the super mouse you see here. Others are more subtle. This model can have DUX4 turned up or turned down. This mimics human FSHD where pulses of DUX4 expression lead to sudden deterioration followed by long periods of no change. This will allow us to test treatments in an animal model where DUX4 behaves like it does in people. We're also investing in drug discovery projects worldwide. Right now, there are thousands of small molecules being screened to see if they may affect DUX4 expression or affect processes that DUX4 affects, or completely circumvent the effect of DUX4 building stronger muscles. The possibilities are endless. The Foundation is also putting FSA, FSHD research into the fast lane. Normally, research takes years to go from ideas to the pharmacy shelf. The foundation is leveraging the power of the biotech industry to fast track a target for FSHD2, a protein called SMCHD1. This protein is also an important modifier in FSHD2, oh, one, sorry. So finding molecules that will affect this protein will help treatments for both conditions. By using biotech, we get to bypass the normal pathway for therapeutics and go straight to drug development. If all that wasn't enough, we're breaking new ground in research by drawing on the experience of people with FSHD in our community. Instead of looking down the microscope for the next research direction, FSHD Global looks to the community. Last year, you heard about our bone health study, which was based on reports from our community that fractures were a serious issue. The results of this trial will mean better treatments for people with FSHD to help build strong bones and prevent fractures. This year, we're exploring respiration. From our community, we know that many people with FSHD have trouble breathing, particularly at nighttime. Nighttime apnea 
reduces the amount of circulating oxygen. This has negative consequences on muscle strength and also puts you at risk of other chronic conditions. Nighttime apnea leads to daytime sleepiness, making people less able to perform daily tasks. And if you think about someone with FSHD who is already facing challenges to daily tasks, this added challenge may be the difference between working and not. There is an easy fix for this, and it's readily available, but according to the American Neurological Association, people with FSHD don't need help breathing. A study that looks at the prevalence of breathing problems and explores the effectiveness of using mechanical support will open up this technology to people with FSHD. This is what our community helps us achieve. So that was a lot of information in a short period of time, so let me just unpack it for you a little. In eight years, we've unlocked the genetic cause. We can build muscles in animals. We build an FSHD muscle in a cell, in a lab. We're fast-tracking research to ultimately build muscles in people. Oh, my slides are doing something funny. I'm the technical person, but I don't know how to drive this. So what's next for the foundation? For 2016, the foundation's goals are to continue to translate preclinical work into clinical. Part of this is a publication of our consensus statement. In September last year, we got 13 of the world's leading clinicians in FSHD out to Australia, where they produced a statement about the standard of care that people with FSHD should be expecting from their healthcare team. 2016 will be a comprehensive education and awareness campaign to make sure that these practice guidelines are taken up by clinicians and that will improve healthcare for everyone with FSHD in Australia. 2016 also sees the launch of our diagnostics tender. People with FSHD often face years of being undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. A diagnosis is powerful. It gives you an idea of what your future may hold and the opportunity to plan for it. Our plan is not only to bring diagnostics to Australia, but to improve diagnostics, making Australia the world-leading diagnostic centre. There's also our work on infantile FSHD. We already provide support for an international collaboration, working to better understand the severe and debilitating form of FSHD. Last year, the Foundation lost our patron, Monica Ellis, who herself had infantile FSHD. Monica remains an inspiration to us all. And last year, we established the Monica Ellis Children's Medical Research Grant as a legacy to this incredible woman. This grant has received a great deal of attention with applications from Australia, the US, and the Netherlands. These projects are clinically focused, offering hope of a cure for children and their families. This year, we've been able to release our largest ever pot of funding, 1.3 million in total for projects looking at therapeutics, diagnostics, and infantile FSHD. We've received 22 applications. Four of these are from people who haven't worked on FSHD before. That's four labs around the world who are bringing their expertise to FSHD who we didn't have last year. This is a testament to the global footprint of FSHD Global, with 59 scientists in nine countries, including 18 Australians. Our EOI of 1.3 million might be our biggest yet, but with that amount of funding, we can really only give money to three, maybe four projects over three years. Each and every one of these applications could change lives, and I'd like to be able to fund every single one of them. But tonight I'd set off being in a position to increase that from four to eight. So tonight I've spoken to you about the progress the Foundation has made. I've told you about the translational research we're involved in. We are standing on the cusp of something huge. We are so close to giving people with FSHD something tangible. I would love to stand in front of you in 2017 and tell you about the treatment that's progressing through clinical trials, the diagnostic that's now available for all Australians, or the groundbreaking discovery that changes the future for all children with FSHD. I've worked in research organisations in New Zealand, the UK and Australia. And I can say with absolute confidence, if there's an organisation that can pull this off, it's the FSHD Global Research Foundation. Thank you.